Hello everyone, my name is Mauricio Lastres and welcome back to my channel for another MoTeC tutorial. Today we're going to be continuing our Monday series and continuing uh, the video that I started on last week about uh, damper histograms and tuning dampers in iRacing. So to review, last week what we did, we, we set up a few channels that basically broke up uh, damper velocities into its constituents of um, high speed and low speed bump and rebound and we ended up setting up a, a series of um, math channels that I think are going to prove to be beneficial uh, especially for um, less experienced uh, users with uh, analyzing dampers and looking at histograms and uh, today what we're going to do we're actually going to put them to use and we're going to uh, do some runs in, a, in the car um, on a track and see if we can tune the dampers to get them um, to be optimized. So let's go ahead. So we're in MoTeC and uh, today I was doing some laps around the Mid-Ohio sports car course uh, in the BMW Z4 GT3. Um, I chose um, the Mid-Ohio sports car course because I've seen um, in the past at least, uh, especially one time when I was racing in the uh, the what was kind of like the Pirelli World Challenge series with the Cadillacs and the Kias that uh, optimizing damping around Mid Ohio is really really uh, beneficial to lap time and makes a big difference, uh, especially for anybody that doesn't. Um, there's a lot of bumps uh, in Mid Ohio and it causes the cars to generally, with baseline setups, maybe makes them un uh, oversteer a little bit too much. Um, it's kind of like difficult to get the back end planted. Um, with all the undulations, so uh, damper tuning at Mid Ohio is very critical, and it very and helped me that weekend um, a lot. Uh, a lot of laps around that racetrack. Um, that was several years ago, maybe like four years ago, and um, that was definitely a big help. So I came back here and I threw basically a random setup uh, that I downloaded online for the BMW, which is current to season four, 2016 but um, definitely was not for Mid-Ohio. So it's a setup from a different racetrack and I just threw it in for Mid-Ohio. So I realistically, the damping on it should be wrong and we'll see what we can do to uh, um, get it right. So let's go ahead and start off. So um, the first thing that I did was I actually went to that setup and then I changed the damping and I'm gonna show you a couple extremes to see what, what happens. So this is the, let me turn off the laps. So this is the setup on the car that I'm running. And I changed all the damping basically to almost no damping at all. So negative 11 is the least amount of damping for all these settings, except uh, the BMW does allow you to maybe like low speed rebound or something go below that. But I just want to kind of keep it um, like that. So all the other uh, settings on the damper are at their minimum. And we'll see what that looks like. And then um, we'll go back to our suspension analysis channel. So here are my tabs for suspension analysis. And generally these are, like I said, not very useful um, most of the time. This is the damper histograms where we like to uh, play. This is the same thing, but plotted overlaid. And this is what I made with our new information from last week. So this, these plots, unfortunately, I know it's, it's kind of like a messy screen and, and I generally don't like, let me go ahead and actually make this so that hopefully everybody can see everything. I don't want to cut off information. Well, let's hope it'll be... Actually, you know what I can do? I can just go like this. Maybe by raising the information, that'll be a little bit better. Okay. Hopefully you can see everything. I think that's better. 
I'll just leave it like that until I know that there's something in the corner that you need to see. So anyway, um, I generally don't like to have screens that are too busy, but in this case, since we're looking at um, so many different um, components individualized, uh, I kind of don't see much of a choice. Um, obviously, I could have these kind of uh, displayed in an overlay lapped fashion, so then that'll kind of clear this up a little bit. But you can see, this is what uh, the damper histogram looks like, and it's this is what it's made up out of. And let's go ahead and cover a few more laps. So now we have four more laps, so then the data is smoothed out a little bit. We can cover a little bit of the outlap as well. And you can see that this is what makes this up. And that is why I think that this is useful because sometimes I think looking at this data, it may be difficult for some users to figure out what is it I need to do if I'm not achieving the ideal damper um, shape or these um, statistical values. So it may be difficult, you know, if you see, okay, what do we see here? Well, we see that um, there's a little bit of skewness to the right, the peak on the rear dampers. The, these two are the rear ones, are offset towards bump a little bit, which is obviously not good. And then it's also very flat and way, 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 way flatter than the front dampers. They're not symmetric. There's a dif different damping values for the front and the rear. You can see the average velocities, 25 are for the front dampers and 50, almost 50 to the rear. And you can see the imbalance here is also shown numerically. So that means that the front is on the average bouncing up and down at 25 millimeters per second, which is actually pretty good. And the rear is bouncing up and down at 46. So then the car is kind of doing this type of thing. Um, that's not very stable um, platform to be driving with. Um, generally that would really upset the car um, and, and it really would hurt the lap times. <clears throat> so. You can see this is what this is made up out of. And, and then so when we break, break it down a little bit further, what we see is that now this is the, the high speed. And see, we maybe sometimes you can use this information to pick out what's wrong with the car or the dampers um, more clearly. Like if there's one particular setting that's out of whack while the other ones are actually in pretty good shape. So what we see here, um, where is our zero? So this is positive four. It's kind of hard to actually get the uh, x-axis to be very nice. Um, you can play around with your... this. These values here are what determine the x-axis, but it has to do with the binning. Specified bin count. Binning should be automatic, so we'll just leave it the way it is. But you can still play around with it to try to get the x-axis to be a little bit nicer. Um, regardless, you can see where in both cases, the low speed and the high speed are really flat for the rear settings. And um, it's not immediately obvious which one has more of the asymmetry. But there is a little bit more of a... So these two, rear left, rear right. The bump in high speed and the bump in low speed in the rears is seems to be a little bit too far to the right where the bump or what is this rebound yeah the rebound settings kind of seem to be more like it's it's skewness off center which it should be off center because it's you know this is just rebound by itself. Um, is kind of more or less where it should be. I, th I feel like this is uh, this is causing a little bit of the skewness is actually the bump on the right side, uh, uh, the compression on the damping on uh, on the rears. That's kind of what, what's causing the skew skewness over here, and it's skewed obviously to the bump. So um, that's the case. There's a little bit too much compression in the rear. And then, so we have these, uh, the, the visual uh, histograms here. And then I also, I think um, last week we saw this plotted as well. 
so this is the uh, the same information. These are our average speeds for the bump and rebound and high and low speed. And I have them, I think, in the same order that uh, you have them set up in iRacing's garage. So you always set up low speed bump, high speed bump, low speed rebound, high speed rebound. So you can see the average velocity is there. And then this is um, perhaps maybe going to be a, a little bit of a use when you're actually trying to tune for um, handling balance changes. And so this is the acceleration, which only takes the front rebound and rear bump. And on the braking, so that takes front compression and rear rebound. Then after that, we have our FFTs. So this is just position and velocity. And I made a new um, worksheet, which is called damper metrics, which is gonna show us our heave and pitch motion. And then just for good measure, I threw in their uh, vertical G-force and um, the individual corner ride heights. So we're gonna use all these four and we're gonna do some comparisons. So we already looked at what it looks like when the system is as under damped as we can get it. Now I'm gonna bring in another lap. Actually, I already have it. So I'm gonna bring in another lap that I did, which was, that should be showing us the over damped condition where I put in the maximum damping. Yep, so they're all zero, which is maximum damping and we're gonna to try to get the system to be overdamped. And see what happens. Okay, so now we changed it. And now we can see a huge difference where it seems, before we were seeing something like 25 millimeters per second for the front. So it seems like the front has slowed down quite a lot and the rears have slowed down even more and now they've actually overtaken the front tires and now it's the fronts that are actually moving a little bit faster than the rear. And the percentages are a little bit better, but they're still, so now we're seeing skewness to the right in the rears and the peaks are completely different place, but opposite to what we had before. Now, I want to go over um, a couple little things about these, uh, the math channels that we went over last week. So a couple little things that um, I noticed. Uh, first of all, I guess my understanding of the uh, suspension position was a little bit backwards. And when I was writing the, the damper math channels, for some reason I kind of rationale, um, rationalized in my head that um, the downward direction was um, when the when the suspension was actually compressing but it's actually when the suspension is traveling up is when you're under compression that of course makes more sense so there is an error in the um, calculation here which is the sign um, so to create a bump now the damper velocity should be positive so then I'm saying choose damper velocity greater than zero. Last week I showed negative uh, less than zero. So we're gonna have to change all those back to positive. Or you can keep on the same, but um, understand that um, it's actually backwards. You could also just relabel. It, it's irrelevant really, but you can relabel your, um, your, your, your math channel name but uh, just to keep uh, the convention with the, the other things that are already set up for you, it's better just to go ahead and change it to positive. And then uh, we have our derivative filter high pass. And then um, this was brought up to me by one of the uh, you, um, one of the viewers and in the comments. And he said that maybe uh, it'd be better if I just set up a constant to have the cutoff frequency. So that's what I went ahead and did and played around with. So now we have a constant uh, showing the cutoff frequency and that's here. You can click on it and then you know it'll insert the uh, constant function. And then the constants are made just by here, you know, you add constant, you put the name and whatever the value is. And the benefit of that is that I can come here and change it. So I think uh, last week I had it at something like 0 
and this week I, I played around with it a little bit more and changed the cutoff frequency to 0 0.5 and what that does is that it changes these um, average values um, so now they're a little bit more in line with what you end up seeing here so so you see that the total average of the high and the low speed is it around 19, 18, 18, 15? And we're gonna see something somewhere here, 19s and 15 for the bump, 18 for the rebound. But these, are, of course, are broken up with the, um, the velocity of the high and the low. So this, this is close, but it doesn't have to be exact to this because this is incorporating high and low, and this is just high and low for the rebound and the bump. So that's perfectly fine the way it is. And what we see here is something, a little bit of additional information, which is also gonna be critical. So let's go ahead and compare. So, so well, actually let's finish looking at this for one second. Um, so what's interesting to me is that the front dampers, again, are looking pretty good. These speeds are all very acceptable. Um, from what I've seen, you gen generally wanna keep your average velocities between 20 and maybe 35 millimeters per second at the worst. Um, and in my and that, that's including real life. And in my experience um, in iRacing, 25 to 30 was always something really good um, and I was always aiming for, but 20 th to 30 is um, basically now what, I, what I'm looking for uh, as far as uh, damper velocities. So, that's just a big range for that should encompass almost any car um as you get experience and let's say you just drive one car in one series um you should be able to find a lot closer range maybe where it's plus or minus two or three at, at worst and then you sh you know you should hopefully find that oh, you're between 23 and 25, 23, and 26 millimeters per second, whatever the, the value may be. And that way you can try to be consistent and aim for a setup that always gives you that type of um, uh, wheel speed. Um, so the, the thing here is that we see that um, the high speed settings here are very, very slow. 15, 18, 14, 17. The rear's low speed are interestingly kind of high actually three and four and four. So it's kind of interesting that they're not as uh, low as, you know, it, the high speed stuff is much lower than in the front tires, but the low speed stuff is actually much slower. So this is our low. And let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit more. So, so in this case, you can see that um, the, the, the symmetry on the high speed, like I said, is actually pretty good. And you can see the peaks here are equal on both sides of the rear tires. And they seem to be maybe symmetrically apart from each other. I, I, it's hard to see where the zero line would be, but maybe they're just a slight skewness, skewness to the right. But the shape of these two is very symmetric but if you look at the left um, here on the low speed side um, their peaks are completely far apart and then th you can see this is where the velocity comes from the um, the higher averages for the low speed and stuff um, you have a lot of bump this is going to be the low speed bump and it's spending more time doing whatever it's doing and that, that's probably what's causing this skewness to the right So let's go ahead and compare the performance actually because I think that's probably one of the more, more important things to see what that actually does to the car. So comparing these two, we'll overlay them. Now we have our overlay, let's go ahead and just make sure that we have just the four laps of that were driven. Okay. So overlaying these you can see. Our reference lap is the, the over damped one, and you can see the difference in the shapes. Okay. 
Let me see where my front velocity was before. Unfortunately, uh, MoTeC does not um, show you comparison values when you have two different laps. So, so we were at 26 and 27, 25. Okay, so that was about 25 millimeters per second. Let's make them green. You can see the difference. You can see the difference here. So it went from 25 to 19. So we lost five millimeters per second in the front. And these were you know, much, much, much higher velocities. To clarify, um, actually, I think I should go ahead and clarify how the histogram works. So on the bottom, on the x-axis, yeah, this is your speeds. So this is zero millimeters per second, 50, negative 100. So out here, that, that's how fast you're going. And why, if this one is so flat, why is it faster? The average, because, and then this is on the y-axis, you have your percentage of time spent in those uh, values. So the average is higher because the flatter you are, that means that you're spending more time at 50, and 100 and 150 millimeters per second, where you see like in the case of the red traces, you know, they're, they're spending almost zero at 150, almost zero at 100 millimeters per second. So that brings their average way down. So the more peak and pointy it is, the lower the average speed is gonna be. So I know that it looks kind of like uh, backwards and that the peakier it is, the faster, but it's actually the opposite. And then this dashed line obviously represents the middle where you're, you're, you're spending an equal time, um, you know, in bump and rebound. So that's why we want uh, to form symmetry. So let's look at um, here. Now it gets a little bit more difficult to see when you're overlaying multiple laps. But visually you can see the differences. And then um, in this case, what we're looking at is the statistics of average and standard deviation. And this is not for bump and rebound, but just total velocity. So what we're here, what we're looking for here is to ensure that, um, that you're seeing symmetry. So then here we see zero, which is good, zero, zero point one for the average. But you definitely want it to be um, zero or close to it. If you didn't see zero, that would probably mean that there's something very seriously wrong with your suspension, um, because then you know you would somehow be spending a little bit more time rebounding than in bump, um, which would be odd. And then we see our standard deviation, which is how far away. Um, that's gonna have a kind of a bit to do with um, your width of your curve here in the histogram. So the one with the smaller standard deviation is going to be the one that's a little bit peakier and that's the case here. So you see the standard de deviations for our um, histograms are for the reference the red 25, 28, 30, 29 and then for the green 36, 37, 60, 61. So you can see that Numerically, you can see that they're wider and flatter, while you can see numerically that the red was a little bit um, more contained in its average. What does this all mean? Well, let's actually compare these. Like right now, we're just looking and evaluating and then we see values in the damping that we don't like. Um, I think if I was looking at this and I, and I was just analyzing without knowing that we purposely overdamped or tried to overdamp um, the, 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 the suspension, um, I would say that maybe our, our velocities are a little bit too low and then clearly we don't have the symmetry that we want either. This is skewed to the right. It's well above um, where the front is. Um, that's not going to be um, the best um, setup we want them to be a little bit more, uh, the speed should be closer to each other. So we would definitely make some changes, but let's look at the actual performance on the car and speed. So this is where we're gonna look at our FFT and our damper metrics.
So what does this mean? So what we're looking at, and I think it's important to set up uh, correctly these FFTs, um, you're going to want to go to FFT, you know, you make one, you pick your properties. This is very critical here um, to set up your X scale and your Y scale correctly. We're in power spectral density and I've rescaled the X scale from one to 30. And in this case, we're in log scale, but you know, I change that um, regularly and um, you'll see in the next page that they're not in log scale. So you can see that there's big difference here. You can tell with the two different damper setups, the velocities are massive changes here. Um, which one's better? Well, smaller in this case is uh, generally known to be a uh, better situation. So that means that there's less variation in total, less movement with the, um, the, the one that, that seems to be more like overdamped. Now, that, the thing is that it's not really overdamped. Um, we just damped the, uh, our, our, our shock absorber as much as we could. Um, we've minimized um, the flow of the uh, damper fluid to and restricted it to a point where as mu as much as we can um obviously the, the the damper is designed so you probably can't get to that point because what would be why why give an adjustment that, that would actually allow you to do that I and mean, you have to consider that the damping or that uh, the suspension setup that, that's going to yield these plots includes everything else that's in them so it includes your spring rates your anti-roll bar rates and your tire pressures and the construction of the tire. So every single spring that's in the system, in the model, is going to be included in this. So as you make setup changes, that has to do with this. So maybe to achieve actual over damping, um, we would have to make a change to the rear springs or the, you know, the rear and the front springs. Um, I can see here that our front and rear spring rates are pretty low. So with 176 newton per meter um, rear spring, you know, uh, maybe that's why we can't uh, get the uh, case of like over damping, but that's okay. Regardless, we can see that this is a big difference and, and what it means um, when, it's, when the, the suspension is moving less, unless if you're going overboard, is that um, hopefully, you know, the, the suspension will go over a bump and then, and then in the fewest amount of cycles, tune down to where it, it's riding flat again. If there was only a single bump and the road was perfectly even, um, the more damping you have, the less following oscillations you're going to have after that. If it was uh, critically damped and it was damped perfectly, it would just do it once and then, you know, you would be settled. And um, so, so this means that there's less unnecessary movement what well, you really would want your to, to have your wheel movement your wheels vertical movement to match the uh the road input uh vibrations perfectly but in reality what happens is every time that you go over a bump that causes the a couple additional oscillations to happen afterwards that are not necessary so we're trying to minimize those so that's why minimizing the the variance and the power in the uh, suspension is going to show you that, that you're actually improving the suspension's uh, behavior. So being on the lower side is generally good on all of these plots. And on the damper metrics, where we're gonna show is a comparison of heave motion, pitch, and the ride heights, with, and, and the vertical g-force. So obviously, you can see here, again, that this is uh, the red trace is actually a lot better it seems that you know it seems like as if it got a little bit worse maybe um a higher g but then hopefully hopefully maybe there's a couple harsh cases where the damping there's like really hard bumps and then you end up um going over the bump and then maybe the tire goes off the ground or something because it, it, it doesn't rebound quickly enough and then the, the car slams back down so then you you can end up with higher g forces sometimes uh, going over some bumps. So that's a characteristic and you can feel it when you're driving in iRacing even through through iRacing and visual vibrations that you have in the cockpit and then also through your um, force feedbacks uh, when you go closer to over damping. I didn't feel the car in this case uh, like as if it was too harsh of a suspension 
but um, sometimes you can feel it when it, when it is over damping. You can feel as if the, the rear of the car got up off the ground just a little bit and slammed really hard, and that's how it, it's behaving going over bumps. So I didn't feel that was the case, but sometimes that's what you can end up having. Uh, this is still much less critical. Like this is a huge difference over here in this area. And same, same thing for the, the heave and the pitch. So, to exp and then you can see it individually in the, in the right heights. This is a lot easier way of just looking at it and just looking at the right heights. Um, I made these two mathematical channels, which you can't, you can choose to use or not, um, or you can make up your own, whatever. Um, the heave motion, what that is, is um, basically synchronous motion. It's either vertical or, well, it's all vertical um, in the car. Either the, the, the car is going up in all four corners at the same time or down on all four corners at the same time. So I made a channel that it's basically based on the right heights. So that's why it's not really that necessary, but it's based on the right heights and it's only going to calculate based on the moments when the right height on all four cases is going up or going down. And then the pitch motion is either when the front is going down and the rear, both rears are going up or when both fronts are going up and the, both rears are going down and then it'll calculate values for that. So that's what that one is. Well, that's what it shows. Um, you can see it's the Y scale is not chosen very well, but it's on auto scale. I can manually move it, but we'll need it to change it later anyway. Um, you can see in every, almost every single case, um, the red was better. How was it on time? The red was actually better anyway. So it was about four tenths. Uh, about three, almost four tenths faster um, to, to have the additional damping. Not the world's largest difference. Maybe you would have expected uh, maybe like one and a half seconds or something. But um, in this case, the difference was worth about four tenths per lap. Still a big difference um, considering this is, you know, just one setting change. And it really, it's a fine tune adjustment. Um, realistically what you should want to do is you know save this for absolute last um, because as you can see the, the returns aren't necessarily always that huge um, some tracks are going to be more than others but um, it's worth a few tenths to have the damping set up correctly so this is now you can see th this is the case the obvious case of um, the two extremes so, so I also ran we'll close all the data I also ran um, the, the baseline, uh, well, it's not baseline, but the, the setup the way that it was supposed to be, um, the way that I downloaded it. I ran that with the damping that it had on it. So we'll look at that. So the damping that I had on it was the, the following setting. So it had on the, the compression, it had zero on the, low, on the high speed, then negative five low speed, bump. Uh, this is for the front, then the rebound was negative four, negative four for the, for the high speed and the low speed, and I should change the order on that. Um, and then compression at the rear, zero, negative seven, negative four, zero, that's the, the low speed. I'll change the order on those, um, I don't really like the way that's being displayed. Mm -hmm. So we can see now I did several laps. Let's go ahead and just take the first four or so, maybe five, and take the averages. Okay, so let's look at these. So this is actually in the, in the better order. So you can see, uh, this is the damper setup that I had. Low speed, high speed, low speed, high speed, low speed, high speed, low speed, high speed. Yeah, that's the way I want to display it. And this is actually looking really good. So this is something straight off of um, a download that I made. And again, it's for a different racetrack and I did, did that on purpose because I was hoping that uh, this would have something to be fixed. And um, sure enough, yeah, it looks like, like there is a little bit of something that we can do here. Um, first of all, I mean, I just, when I look at this, I, I do think it's a little bit funny. Um, a lot of these are damped as much as they can. Obviously we have three values at zero. And then also, some of them are a little bit, um, 
backwards, it seems. At least there's more damping in the rebound than there is in the bump. But it seems like it went too far in the rear because we're seeing skewness to the right in the rear. So it's too much bump. Definitely, we need more rebound in the rear. The velocities look good, and we're seeing good, generally good um, symmetry, at least in the front. In the front right, we have 21 and 21 millimeters per second. Uh, yeah, 21 to 21. In the rear, we don't see that symmetry, 20 to 25, 20 to 24. And then the percentages here, 40, 40 to 30. So that's no good. The, the front is looking actually pretty, pretty good. Uh, not too much. Uh, I'm pretty happy with the front, but the rear can be improved. And that would change, you know, the balance. So it, it, what it means is that the rear damping is not optimized. Um, that will have an effect on the balance of the car. Especially, well, only in the transient moments, but that could affect your corner entry and corner exit and how the car feels um, on throttle. And it, and it will also, the thing is that it'll also affect your overall grip, I guess, because um, the low speed settings are what affect your, your the transient moments of corner entry and corner exit and turn in and, and when you track out. But um, the high speed setting and the low speed setting ultimately um, define how the car rides over bumps and the the basically the variance of the car's contact tire contact patch so um, the transient moments aside when the car is going over these bumps throughout the entire lap it doesn't matter at what moment um, that's where we're that's what we're really doing trying to do here is we're trying to optimize for that um, the following step would be that after you have your damping optimized, then you may ask yourself, is there anything I can do where like maybe there's still one aggravating thing about your setup that you can't fix doing anything else, then you can try to use the, 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 the damping. But right now what we're looking for in the mode that we're in is just all we care about is trying to um, minimize the, the change in the tire contact patch and the forces applied to the tires. Um, so this is, what, this is what we're trying to do. So, so optimizing the rear actually will help your, your entire lap here to balance it with the front. Seeing them overlaid, you can see that the difference is not gigantic. Again, the damping here is actually not too bad and it's a lot better than I would have thought just by intuitively looking at these values. But again, there is uh, improvement that we can make. We can compare this to the um, laps that we had just uh, shown before. And let's see what that, that looks like. So if, I, if I'm correct, um, I said that it should be lower. So let's see what that looks like um, compared to the other cases. Okay, so let, let's evaluate the damping. Um, so now we have three laps that we're comparing and we can pick out which one's which. Clearly the green in this case is definitely the, um, the very under damped. The red, I believe, is going to be our current case, which we're hoping is, is the correct amount of damping. And then um, the blue, the light blue should be the case where it was um, damped as much as, as we, we could. And uh, I'm calling it over damped even though it really probably isn't. But now we can look at them and compare. And the red line is kind of falling in between the two. And hopefully that's kind of what we would expect because if, if the, the red line is supposed to be faster and more optimized, which I believe it is, then you would kind of think that the other case was a little bit maybe too extreme and and otherwise we would always be just running maximum damping all the time and then that would be it and we wouldn't bother looking at this stuff and now i'm just trying to see if, if we can visually see a difference i mean you can definitely see where at least the the green line which is the under damp case seems to be definitely fluctuating much more i mean you can see here who has the highest peaks and it's definitely the green under damped one it's not immediately too obvious that the red or the, the blue is, it looks like the blue, you know, has lower amplitudes than the red. 
but it's again it's just too extreme it's um it's gone too far so it's kind of falling in between and let's look how it affects the the heave and pitch so the interesting thing is that it seems like the pitch has actually improved a lot more and maybe we would expect such a thing because um what was it that we saw There's still an improvement that we can make to the rear, but the, the suspension symmetry was very, very different in both cases. When, when we were looking at the, um, right, when we were looking at the case where it was over damped, the rear velocities were much slower than the front. And then that would, that would definitely make it a big effect to the pitch. So that means that the car is, uh, the, the changes in pitch are happening a lot more. There's a lot more variation in that than there is, um, with the the more optimized setup where the, there's better symmetry front to rear. So you can see that here the pitch is actually improved. Um, the heave is just a little bit worse. And you can see the, the fluctuation in just the individual dampers. What about, um, you're kind of falling in between the two here for the, the vertical G-forces, which is again true. Like the case is that your vertical G-forces may actually end up increasing at some point where now when, when, when the damping becomes too harsh, your vertical Gs you would expect to actually increase. Um, so you can, and there's a case where, where you're gonna have a minimum and it's gonna be uh, when you're better, closer to your, your optimal um, damping because again, when you, when you start cl getting closer to over damping that those impacts um, on the contact tire patch are gonna create high vertical G forces. So then let's go ahead and turn off those comparisons. So let's see, what do we do then? So let's make some notes and we'll, we'll, we'll make our, 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 so pretending that this is a real lap and this is, you know, um, a real practice lap and we have one adjustment left to make, um, let's make some, some, some decisions. So let's see, what do we see here? Well, we want these two lower peaks to be much higher. That's the, both of these are the rear. So basically the rear means to be, and this is the, the low speed. The low speed rear has to be slowed down a lot. That means that we need more damping but the thing is that I think that we don't have that much more to give can't just add more damping to the rear so I think what we need to do is actually take away a little bit of front damping and speed that up uh, just for the sake of trying to to, to balance the, the, the these plots like I, I don't think I can actually bring these up anymore so we're gonna actually have to bring the fronts down a bit that's really, this is actually a, a very complicated case because normally I like to see the damper values um, a little bit more in the center of the adjustment range, but right now we're running out of adjustment because we're at zero here. So there's, um, we're kind of like in a corner. So we're actually gonna have to bring down the front. So the first thing I'm gonna do, especially the low speed stuff, the high speed stuff, that's red. Yeah, the high speed stuff is not too bad, but we'll probably just, like this is so, big of a difference that we're gonna have to like bring down the whole thing. So I'm probably gonna bring down the front because we have room for, we can bring down damping. We have room, we're, we're, we're almost maxed out. We're gonna bring down the front. I'm gonna like take away one click, one click of damping on all four of the fronts. One click of damping away on all four of the fronts. So that's gonna bring down this peak and it'll bring down this one as well. And then, one thing, we're gonna invert these. So we're gonna, I'm gonna add four clicks to this one, probably gonna make that one zero. Then I'm going to, um, where's our high speed rebound? No, 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 no. So 
So we're going to make the high speed rebound zero. We're going to make the low speed rebound. We're going to take away some of that actually, because I, I, I like actually having a little bit um, of a backward situation to this. So I, I like to have um, less low speed than the high speed. And then on the compression side, We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go. We're gonna take away from the from the compression on both of these cases. We're gonna actually reduce the damping on a lot of these. Yeah. Well, let's try. It. Let's see what happens. Um. But just from looking at this, we definitely need to try to balance it. So we're gonna take a, like I said, we're gonna take away a click from all the fronts, and then we're going to try to take out. We're just going to try to rearrange some of these values a little bit and hopefully that'll help us out. Okay, so I'm going to go to the track and so I'm going to go to the track and, 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 and I'll show you guys what setup I come up with and we'll see how, uh, how that uh, works out, okay? Okay, so I'm hot off the track and um, did some more laps. And ultimately what I ended up doing was that I went down one click on all the fronts. So I took one click off. Um, then I kept the, the low speed compression on the front, on, low speed compression on, on the rear tire the same. Then I took off, um, I went four clicks off of the, the, the rear high speed compression and took two clicks off of the low speed rebound and added four clicks to the high speed rebound. So then we're gonna go ahead and look at those results. So let's plot that. We'll do five laps and we'll compare it to the ones that we had before. So now red is going to be um, my new um, laps. So you can see the difference here this is zero where before it was four this is negative two no before it was zero and so on um like i said i kept the the low speed compression the same so that was negative seven and then the fronts all got one click less so that's what i'm going to actually speed up the fronts and um hopefully reduce the speed on some of the rears okay so what do we see um the green was that skewness and you can see that it's actually gone now and now the highest peak is all down our center line so that's improved and then our average velocities are a little bit better we can see that there's a little bit more uniformity except for this little corner right here that's one millimeter per second slower but all the other ones are very very close to each other our percentages are close to each other so I'm happy to see that I think that's um, an improvement you can see we kind of fix the skewness by moving it over to the left that's more rebound than we, we had before um, it's critical that I kind of swap these so now basically it used to be that this was um, the other way around. I don't like it when um, basically you have more more low speed damping than high speed damping. Or the other way around, no. Anyway, it's kind of confusing sometimes. So regardless, let's look at um, these plots. Um, what did it do to the overall speeds? It, it did end up increasing some of the speeds, which is okay. We're still within our, our range. 
but it was all for the sake of balance. So red is our reference. So it ended up, in, you can see it, it raised these peaks up a little bit and moved them just a little bit closer to center. It uh, did a big difference in the high speed though. Like uh, we traded a couple of values there and this is really gonna fill in um, some of the plot on the left. So, so we're kind of getting to where before, you know, we saw this big difference in the, these two peaks here and they're getting a little bit closer. Let's see. What we see here is um, a little bit better performance as well. Again, the averages are all zero, 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 zero. And the standard deviations are 29, 31, 30, 31. And whereas before it's 27, 31, 30, 31 and a half. So a little bit of an improvement there as well. Um, what we're looking is for like little signs that the, the suspension is performing better than it was before. Okay, so now let's look at our FFTs. Um, red is our reference, uh, is our new uh, set of, um, right? Yeah, so red is our, our improved setup. Um, like I said, there wasn't that much of a difference. And, and what I did to the front was I just uh, uniformly brought those down. So I didn't make any changes relative to each other at high speed and low speed. So that should be pretty close. We're gonna see more of a difference in the rear because there I swapped some values and, and generally lowered a lot of them and in, increased some others. So, so the balance in the rear is really what changed more. Um, we see a little bit of a difference here. So basically, uh, especially on the right rear, the right rear damper shows a little bit less of a difference um, or, or variation in, in in displacement same thing with the velocities here the fronts are close to each other small improvements in the front right but um, we're looking more for the rear okay and then we see a big improvement in the heave motion of the car same thing the, the right heights are kind of like close to each other the vertical g-forces are not too far apart peaks in different locations um but i mean generally we see an improvement here where at least there's you know a lot smaller peak between the 1.8 and 2.3 hertz range so i mean that seems to be a little bit better um it's interesting to look at and see that the pitch motion is actually now actually has a little bit more um, energy density. So that's a case where actually now we're seeing a little bit of a conflict between pitch and um, heave. Even though the, the velocities front to rear actually are, have a better balance. So I mean, what could that be a sign of? It's hard to tell. Mm, a little bit more thought wouldn't have to be put into it, but overall, like we're seeing that there's an improvement in um, a lot of the other metrics. So I mean, we see that definitely heave is an, is an, has improved. We can see that um, the right heights individually in the rear here. You can see the right rear is a lot better than it was before. The left rear looks kind of like about the same. The right front looks like it's uh, improved. The left front seems about the same. Um, not too much of a difference in vertical G. And then we saw that there's kind of like nice differences in the uh, suspension position. So we would say statistically that um, the new setup with the damper values, how I changed them is actually improved uh, the setup and the performance. And ultimately it was also faster. So actually I did pick up speed. Um, between the two. Ah, this is what I was looking for. So, 
Um, speed was picked up. I did a, with the optimized setup, a 23.3. And before, the fastest lap was like a 23.7. I can look at it this way too. Yeah, it was a 23.7. 23.3 versus the 23.7, so we gained quite a lot of lap time just um, in, in the small change there. The car also felt better. Um, definitely was improved, um, and I'm really happy with the change actually. But can we still do? Can we do? Can we do any better? Well, let's see. It's a small difference, but I mean, um, still, like, it seems like maybe now, now that we've achieved moving over the peak, um, perhaps we could get away with you know, making a small change still to the rear damping. But I think maybe in this case, we may need to look at this one. So the rear high speed now is looking pretty symmetric. So let's not mess around with that too much. We need to flatten out the what are we looking at here this blue and this pink that's the low speed bump low speed bump. we have room to take away from that I want to flatten that out a little bit more because again I can't bring this up I can't increase the damping in the high speed and low speed um, and I don't want to just move it, move the low speed. So maybe what I would do is take one click out of both this. So this should be, uh, I do another run. This should, should be minus eight, this should be minus five. And this will try to flatten this out just a little bit more. Um, but then how are velocities? That'll speed up the velocity in the rear anyway. Maybe it'll match a little bit closer to the front. So we're slower in the rear. We can speed it up a little bit more, so that's fine. So that, that'll be the next change. One more final change, minus eight, minus five. I think that we should be in business. I think that should be perfect damping. Um, we'll have that optimized. Okay, so I think that was fun. I think we went over uh, the whole uh, thing. Again, this is uh, advanced stuff. Uh, this is something that um, you would wanna do for perfecting a setup. Uh, you wanna put a lot of work into it. Um, this is the type of things that you have to do. Um, this is not the quick and dirty way. This is um, full depth, but uh, this is really the only way to squeeze out every single tenth out of the car. Um, this going through this work process will definitely you know uh, help you find another few tenths out of uh, any setup. Um, so that was good. That's for today. That will conclude today's uh, segment. Um, next week, I think we're going to go ahead and start tackling aerodynamics. So I plan to um, do some new maths. We're going to do some testing with the BMW. We're going to do some straight line testing, some coast downs, and some acceleration runs. And we're going to uh, plot an aero map. We're going to see what our pitch sensitivity is, which we saw today. So we'll get into whether or not um, it's better to perfect pitch or heave. Um, we're going to see what the pitch sensitivity of the BMW is. We're going to find out what our um, aerodynamic coefficients are to see um, how much uh, maybe like a wing change will, will affect the car or what the optimal ride height is. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of start doing all that stuff. We're going to break it up, obviously. So we'll, we'll introduce new maths next Monday. And then we're going to go and do our, our, our straight line running um, and try to get uh, some performance uh, values out of the car and then see how we can use those to uh, optimize our lap times further. So until then, I hope that you subscribe to my channel and uh, keep following um, these uh, MoTeC videos and tutorials, and I hope that you like them. And uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comments or com you know, whatever the case is. Um, hope you enjoyed them, and until next time.